the slide release is ambidextrous on both sides, the safety is ambidextrous on both sides. The Nintendo Zapper Ruger LCP, my Wolverine LCP2. This is a variant of the gun that John Wick used in John Wick 1. He used a P30L, so it's a little bit longer. But you can see the 38 Special along the top. And it looks like it did almost as much damage as the 38 Special, even though the bullet's only about half the size. Shoot her! Yes! For science. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to be doing a tabletop firearm review here. I uh, haven't done one of those for a while, but uh, this is a very special gun, and I thought it was uh, warranted. This is the brand new LCP Max. It just came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, for those that pay attention to this channel, uh, Shan Shan and I combined have owned every LCP model that has ever come out. Uh, Shan Shan owned the original LCP and the LCP Custom, and uh, I owned the LCP2, which was uh, Cerakoted in Wolverine colors, for those that have watched that video. However, every single one of those guns had their problems, and we no longer own any of them. Um, the trigger on the original was really bad. Um, the one on the LCP Custom really wasn't that much better. The LCP-2 had some drop safety concerns. And the sights on it were terrible. And the list goes on. Uh, for this version, the LCP Max, it seems like they have fixed every single one of those issues. And added some other super cool stuff. Uh, we recently started going to church and I was not able to carry my Glock 43 in my pocket. It's just too big. And so I got this thing. I went to the zoo the other day and I got a little Kydex holster for this and it was pretty cool. Um, I can run as fast as I want and I don't even uh, know that the gun is there. Fully loaded with the 12 round magazine, uh, this thing still weighs less than a pound. I do not own the 12-round magazine because I don't really want any more extensions down here than is necessary because I'm carrying it in my pocket. So this is the 10-round magazine that it comes with, and I just added the pinky extension. After my video about uh, whether the pinky affects shooting ability or not, um, for those that have watched that video, it affected me quite a bit. So I opted to put the pinky extension on this gun in the hopes that I would be able to shoot it better. I have not taken it to the range at this point, but stay tuned for that video. We are going to be doing that. So, some of the features they've added for this gun. Um, a big one for me, obviously, is capacity. This little bugger, even though it's basically the same size as the LCP-2 with a slightly uh, elongated grip, holds 10 plus 1. The original LCP-2 and all the other LCPs held 6 plus 1. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, the grip here is also just slightly thicker than the other LCPs, which allows you to get a better grip on the gun, which will hopefully allow for better shooting. Another thing that will allow for better shooting are the sights. Um, the sights on all the other LCPs, other than the LCP Custom, which had good sights on it, uh, but the LCP and the LCP-2 both had terrible sights on them, so it was very difficult to shoot this gun. This gun has U-sights on it, very similar to the, the uh, Springfield Hellcat. Yep. And it comes with a tritium night sight uh, on the front, which is fantastic. I usually end up swapping the sights out on my guns because they don't come with night sights, and this one actually does. You can swap these sights out, which is also another nice feature. Um, all the other LCPs had iron sights on them. Uh, this one is swappable. Anything that fits the Smith & Wesson bodyguard will fit this gun. However, I'm not going to be swapping the sights out because the sights that come with it are so good. It's uh, The back sight is actually curved here, so you're not going to snag it on any clothing or anything like that when you're trying to pull it out of your pocket. And it has the nice ledge right here which will allow you to 
cock it one-handed against your boot or a tabletop or any other hard surface in case your offhand becomes disabled. It also comes with these little ears on the back here, very similar to the uh, Smith & Wesson MMP Shield models, which allows you to get a really nice grip and uh, cock it just like that, which is really, really handy. The trigger is a, it's basically a poor man's Glock trigger, which is fine by me because I love Glock triggers. You've got uh, quite a bit of take up right here, but once you hit that wall, it is really freaking solid. And then all you gotta do is apply pressure. And there's your reset. Kind of a lengthy reset, but not bad. Uh, this trigger, based on other YouTube videos that I've watched, is somewhere around five pounds, which isn't super heavy, it's not super light either, but uh, it's manageable. Um, I am not planning on putting another trigger in this gun, unless it turns out that I really, really like shooting it. I've also heard that uh, even though this gun weighs less than a pound, the recoil on it is very, very manageable. Um, I found the LCP2 to be, um, even though it was snappy, very, very manageable. Uh, this one is actually supposed to be even better than that. So, we will see. That's going to be um, for the range video. It's also got this loaded chamber indicator right here, with a very large gap there, which means you can actually visually see if there is a bullet in there. And it's got this tab right here that will uh, protrude slightly if it's loaded. For those of you that have watched my other videos, this is actually a hammer-fired gun, by the way, not striker-fired. You can see the hammer right here. On all my other LCPs, I've painted that uh, red. So that way, uh, you can visually just look at it and know when the gun is hot and ready to go. I will probably be doing the same thing to this gun. There are a couple things about the gun that I don't like. Uh, first of all, the takedown. I cannot stand the takedown on these Ruger guns, where you have to stick a screwdriver in there and pull out this pin just so that the gun is, will come apart. I find that extremely annoying. Every single other gun that I've had has some kind of takedown lever that you can just pull down and the gun will come apart. I don't like the fact that you need a tool to take this gun apart. And in addition, the pin comes completely out, which means you run the risk of losing it. I find that incredibly stupid. Um, every other LCP has been made the exact same way, and that is something that Ruger needs to change. The other thing I don't like about this gun is the slide release. The slide release is just ridiculous. Um, it does work, obviously, as a slide stop, but when you want to release it, It ain't happening. Uh, that may improve as the gun gets broken in, but I don't know. Um, that was also the case on my CP365, where it was just a huge pain to get that to release, and you had to go over the top of the gun to uh, rack it, because this thing just would not work. Um, at the time that I sold the CP365, that lever was easier to, to operate. I'm hoping that this one is the same. However, this is not going to be my primary gun, unless for whatever the reason, I can just shoot it fantastically at the range. Uh, this is more of a backup gun, where, you know, I'm wearing a nice shirt that needs to be tucked in, for instance, going to church, and I just can't carry my other gun with me for whatever the reason. Or it's super de duper hot out, and I need to wear like a tank top or something like that, and this is just gonna go in my, in my pants pocket. So that's basically what I got this gun for. The MSRP for this gun is about 450 bucks. I got this one like three days after the gun came out for 370. So that's about what I paid for the previous models of the LCP, other than Shannon's original, which I got used for like 220. All the other ones were bought new, and they all ran about the same price. I am honestly not expecting anything more out of this than my last LCP, it's just the problems of that model have been fixed, which makes me more comfortable carrying this gun. Um, all I need is something that, can carry, that I can carry in my pocket that shoots reasonably well, 
and so that I can be armed when I'm not able to carry my other gun for whatever the reason. That's basically the only thing I'm expecting out of this gun. I am very much looking forward to shooting it to see if uh, the sights and the reduced recoil actually result in a a gun that I can shoot very well. If I can shoot this gun very well, uh, I'll probably carry it a lot. I may even carry it while I go jogging. Um, I generally do not carry a gun while I'm jogging, but this one I might be able to. So we will see how that goes. Um, let's see. Anything else? I think that's about it. There's just so many great features about this gun that uh, you can just kind of talk about it forever. But uh, yeah, those are those are the the bare basics of this gun right now. Um, we will be doing a range video of this gun the next time we go to the range, and I'll let you know how it shoots. So, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a good day.